All right, we want to welcome everybody to DaVinci Payments Loyalty Study Webinar. We're excited to have you all here. We've got some um, excellent findings we're going to share today. And so we will begin the webinar now. Uh, there still are some people coming in the room. Um, and uh, so if you come in late, if you have questions um, because you came in late or along the way, there is an orange arrow in the top right corner of your GoToMeeting menu. You can click on that, open questions and uh, the tab for questions and send us questions along the way. Um, we will um, have a couple of polls during the uh, webinar, simple questions we're going to ask you to answer, and um, that's all confidential information. It doesn't tie back to you. We don't know how you've responded, uh, but we're doing it to make the presentation uh, more engaging. Um, we're excited to share our results today, um, and so let's get into the webinar. We could go to the first slide. I'm Rodney Mason. I'm the Chief Revenue Officer for DaVinci Payments. Um, I lead insights and um, uh, drove this particular study. Uh, Tracy Monson is our CMO, and she's also going to be presenting today, in particular, sharing some capabilities that we have uh, related to loyalty. Our agenda for today is that we're going to share some uh, loyalty insights from our national study. I'll, I'll share more detail with you on our methodology for that in the results. We'll also share a few featured products of ours and then we'll open it up for uh, Q&A and let you know about some other studies that we have coming up. Next slide, please. Um, as it relates to um, our methodology, uh, we did a uh, national study. And if we can just go ahead and click through, we'll go to that. Uh, we conducted a national study on February 25th of this year um, just as COVID was getting ready to um, take off across, particularly across the United States. This was a national study in the U.S. There were 1,046 participants. It has 97% confidence that it is reflective of the U.S. population. And uh, we did that online via SurveyMonkey. Next slide, please. Okay, so we're going to cover several aspects in loyalty. The first part is how many people are actually participating in a loyalty program. So our presentation today is really focused on loyalty programs, and our methodology was twofold. One, we ask a lot of questions to understand how much people are participating in loyalty programs, how, lo how important loyalty programs are in their purchase decisions. And then we also delve deeper to see what kinds of um, program tactics and um, rewards uh, consumers were looking for in their programs. So. We'll cover all that. We also asked them an open-ended question, and we said, what is your favorite loyalty program? We did not feed them any answers, and the vast majority, almost all of them, had an answer. And so we tabulated those, um, and we captured them, and we ranked them. So we actually have a ranking today of all the best loyalty programs in the United States. And I would say congratulations to all of you. I know we have a lot of attendees that um, are on this list. Congratulations to you for just being on the list. The fact that you can conduct a national study and people actually cite your program unassisted is amazing and means that they value it a lot. But we do have this um, broken out um, ranking across all loyalty programs. We also look at a ranking by industry. So within your vertical, how you rank against some of your competitors. And then we have another ranking on those regional brands that are in less than half the United States and they still rank high, um, just to show that they're punching above their weight. And because a much larger brand that's national is gonna have more reach and obviously more mentions. So um, we'll take you through all of that. We'll also share some verbatims today. So um, we've got about 10 pages and we'll go through it quickly of just users telling us, loyalty program participants telling us specifically what they liked about their favorite programs. Um, so it's very insightful. The great thing is we'll go through it pretty fast, but um, post this webinar, uh, you will be sent a video of the webinar and you'll also be sent the study. So you'll have that. Um, and then we'll finish up at the end. Um, Tracy's gonna walk you through some of our products um, that we have that, that fit really well. So um, we're jumping in the research here. So we asked a question and we found this number to be actually shocking. Uh, we checked it twice and um, we were blown away. So um, it's actually higher than what we found in Q4. 
and that is that loyalty participation is at an all-time high. 97% of men and women in the United States um, said that they are participating in loyalty programs. These are easily the highest numbers that we've ever seen. And there are some reasons for it, and we actually get into it. Our research, as you can see here, will take you through age segments. It takes you into, you know, division between men and women. Um, but 97% uh, is the highest numbers we've ever seen. Next slide, please. The next thing that we found is that almost two-thirds, really uh, right at two-thirds, participate in six or more loyalty programs. Um, that's a lot if you think about it. And we believe that actually there's probably more than six programs that people participate in just based on our questioning. Um, because um, as we would ask them to name some of those that they participate in, they came up with more than six. But to think of two thirds of people um, in six or more loyalty programs um, means, uh, and what that's showing on the trend is that there is a significant upsurge in loyalty, not just in participating in one program, but in multiple programs. Next slide, please. We found that 32% um, are in 11 or more loyalty programs, so they can actually think of them and name them off the top of their head. So that's, again, a pretty amazing number. Next slide, please. So as we start talking about rewarding loyalty, we have some insights in here as to the kinds of programs and the value that loyalty brings um, to consumers. So we go ahead and go to the next slide. Um, so the loyalty game has really changed. And when we're talking about loyalty, there's really kind of two kinds of loyalty. People are loyal to brands, yes, but we're really talking about loyalty programs. And we were very specific in our study to mention that. Um, the reason that um, we did that is so that they could completely distinguish against brands they like and their loyalty and brands with loyalty programs. Now, 89% expect brands to provide a better experience for being a loyal customer. So their expectations are through the roof. Um, they, weren't, they weren't always this high, um, but now they say, if I buy your product, I expect to be treated like a loyal customer. And um, I shouldn't have to come and seek you out. You should be seeking me out. So that consumer attitude has shifted. We're going to share in here some insights as to why that is. I mean, certainly, you know, we were at the end of February, 1st of March. So, um, you know, there's been some big shifts in the market um, driven by that. But there's other outside factors that were already driving participation in loyalty and consumers' expectations of um, providing a loyalty program um, prior to even um, COVID. Next slide, please. Okay, so as it relates to loyalty programs, 79% are more likely to recommend brands with a loyalty program. Um, again, you know, we saw numbers, would you recommend a brand that you like or, or that you're loyal to um, even in Q4? And these numbers are much higher. So consumers are not only looking at brands and you'll see it in some of the numbers coming up, they're not just looking at brands and and how much the brand fulfills their personal needs. Now they're actually evaluating their loyalty program and how important that is to them. And I do wanna provide a caveat. Um, I didn't mention up front the introduction of um, DaVinci Payments, but I'll, I'll do that here really quickly. We are not a loyalty platform. We're not a loyalty agency or company. We provide rewards and payments for corporations um, around the world um, in all shapes and forms. Uh, certainly we do provide rewards for the loyalty industry. We do a lot of consumer studies. And through our studies last year, we saw a surge in loyalty. Um, and so we decided to delve into it um, because it's important. Um, and so that's why the study is here today. So don't want you to think we're out just promoting loyalty programs because that's not what we really sell. Um, we actually provide uh, rewards for um, loyalty programs as one of our services. Next slide, please. 69% are willing to have their shopping tracked for a more personalized reward and brand experiences. So we hear a lot of playback. You'll see it in the verbatims. They actually, as, as a participant in their loyalty program, part of their expectation now is that you will know them better and you won't just send them random coupons. You'll actually send them things that they want. Because if you send them random offers that aren't relevant to them, it wastes their time. And so 
part of their feeling is if I belong to this loyalty program, you need to know me well enough when you do send me offers that they're smart and they're intuitive and they're things that I would actually use. And again, as we go in verbatims and, and some of the other things we share, you'll see very specific instances and we'll name some um, retailers and programs that do that. Next slide, please. 67% will give a second chance for a bad experience if they're in a loyalty program. So we said, what if something really tragic happens with a brand that you like, that you just completely disagree with, it was bad service or whatever it was, but you really like their loyalty program? Would you give them a second chance? And um, more than two thirds said that they would. Next slide. 60% are more loyal to a brand. They have a lot of loyalty rewards with that does not communicate its values versus one that they're, that has values aligned with their beliefs but has no loyalty program. So we got very specific on this and we said, let's say you've got two brands side by side and the one on the left you really like, it aligns better with you, it's more about your personal values, it's who you are and the kind of product that you want. The other brand on the other side is close, but it doesn't really align with you. You don't have as much affinity with it, but it has the best loyalty program and it has all the things in the loyalty program that you would expect. 60% um, so they would be more loyal to the one on the right that is not their brand of choice, but has the better loyalty program. Kind of surprising and shocking. Next slide. 50% stopped using a brand that they liked for one with a better loyalty program. So this kind of goes to the previous slide. Consumers are willing to switch for a better loyalty program. And we talk about this later, but if you think about a loyalty program, the greatest value of it is if you've got a smart loyalty program running, you actually build a moat around your best customers because you have continuous learning and you're continuously giving them more and more of the kinds of experiences and things that they want out of their program. Um, but competitors can research, they can find triggers, they can find ways around that. And 50% of those surveyed have actually switched from one brand to another for a better loyalty program. 43% engage more on brand social media because of a loyalty program. Um, again, you know, um, we've in all of our consumer studies, we've found that the number one way that consumers discover brands, this is across all age groups now, is through friends and family. If you're looking at the 30 plus, uh, television used to be number one. Uh, it's over in position number four or five. That's in some of our shopper studies you can find on our site. If you're looking at Gen Z millennials, television's like number seven or eight, way over on the right. Um, so, Consumers are looking for, uh, or they discover brands from friends and family. And so your loyalty program not only has the value of holding those customers, but if you can, it will get a large percent of them to follow you on social media. And if you provide them with content to share, then they're sharing. And that's one of the very best ways to reach new customers because people have affinity for brands that are recommended by people that they trust. Next slide. So the real value of a loyalty program, obviously it reduces acquisition cost and dependence on new customers. It increases active customers. So it increases their participation with your products. It grows the frequency of purchase. It lowers costs to serve them um, once you understand them better. And then it increases your average revenue per customer. And these things have all been proven out um, in loyalty programs that are working correctly. Sometimes there are programs that are, uh, go a little bit sideways and maybe those metrics don't all, all work out there, but um, with a smart program, that's typically, those are the typical benefits. And as I mentioned before, that smart learning is about building that fortress around your customers. And what's nice about the fortress when you're doing your program right, is that you've invested time in them. And so for your competitors to actually circumvent that, they have to invest that time and people don't have the time to give. So it's easier for them to participate with you as long as you're giving them everything that they're looking for and remaining loyal. Next slide, please. So 
um, we ask about the rewards that drive loyalty and we rank them. Now, typically in a loyalty program, free product is almost always going to be at the top. Um, it will vary by uh, categories and certainly experiences and other things are important, but uh, free product is always right up there, number one. Um, number two, um, far and away, is prepaid cards that can be spent anywhere. Um, and those are preferred 2x over you know other things like PayPal or a check, but they're also ranked higher than you know, discounts paid um, from a loyalty program. So just sending them discounts, prepaid cards are preferred over that. They're also preferred over a variety of options in online store catalog or to earn rewards for a cause. So um, the key in this though is that consumers want choice. So they don't just want free product. Um, if you think about the tiers of your loyalty program, at the very top, you have your best customers, and at the bottom, you have your newer customers that are trying to earn their way. Typically, not in every scenario, but when you look at that pyramid, at the top, the higher you go up, the larger the um, bankroll of free product those customers already have. In other words, they have all the free product that they could possibly use. Um, when you go at the bottom, it's harder for um, those newer people to earn. So for example, we got a verbatim um, for a hotel and they said, we really love the rewards. Uh, we don't travel as much, so it's harder for us to earn. So those, to, to get those people on the lower level to earn their way up, they're looking for alternative types of rewards. And you know, a lot of times, like in the case of, um, I mentioned uh, the hotel industry, when people are younger, they um, tend to travel a little less on business, but over time, they tend to grow more. So you want to get them in the fold and you want to keep them um, attached to your loyalty program. So they would look for alternative prizes. On the high end, you've got other people that are platinum status and have all the free nights or free rewards that they could ever use. And they're looking for alternatives for their points to burn their points. So anyway, that's kind of how the, um, that is how the rewards stack up. If we could go to the next slide, please. And I, I've been talking a lot here. I just want to do a sound check uh, with the team. I assume everything's going good. And um, they just sent me a note. So yes, we're good. Okay, so let's click to the next slide. So when we talk about engagement, now we're talking about you've got a loyalty program up and you want to communicate with your customers in all of the best ways. Um, and so we want to spend a moment here talking about a macro trend that has really changed the whole loyalty game. Basically, um, online, mobile, and Amazon are changing loyalty engagement like never before. 70% um, of those that we polled in this national survey do more than 25% of all of their shopping online. So that's, that's a big number. Next slide, please. 38% do more than 50% of all their shopping online. So, uh, you know, if you think about it right now, that number is much higher because people can't go out in most states. Um, so the numbers are exaggerated in this current situation. But before there was, um, you know, stay at home safety measures in place, 38% uh, were doing more than 50% of all of their shopping online. And these numbers have been consistently growing. We see them in our consumer studies. We did ask this in February um, to get a snapshot and those numbers are up from Q4 holiday. What typically happens with shoppers is they change their behaviors during the holiday and then those behaviors transfer into the next year, they carry over. So you'll see an increase in Q4 in certain behaviors like online shopping, um, mobile shopping, other things like that. And then they, they they peak there in the holiday season. They might go down a little bit, but then they carry through and stay up um, in that Q1 and, and just continue to rise through the year. So um, this number is actually a little bit higher than we saw in Q4. And uh, it's a really high number, 38% doing more than 50% of all their shopping online. Next slide, please. 48% do 50% of their online shopping on their phone. So, you know, you hear it every single day that you have to be mobile first. 
but particularly if you're thinking about a loyalty program and you're thinking about shopping in general, almost half of everyone that shops online, when they shop online, um, do at least half of that or more on their phones. And you do see a difference between men and women. Uh, women are more reliant on their phones, but still the numbers are, are huge. Next slide, please. Okay, so then we ask him, you know, how do you want to track and receive your loyalty program status? So again, we're assuming they're enrolled in a real in a, in a loyalty program with a brand. How do they want to get their updates? How do they want to know what their status is? Um, it was very close. Um, number one is email for tracking and receiving status, and number two is app. But there's a caveat to that. If you look at the age segments, anybody under 44 wants the app and emails number two. Anybody over 45 wants the email and app is number two. And what's interesting about this is, you know, email in the old days was on a computer, but the vast majority, any study that you see, almost all email is done on the phone. So those are both mobile oriented, but having an app is extraordinarily important for your loyalty program. And typically, you know, um, a retailer will build the loyalty program into their overall shopping app, and that can be a good experience. But you should also um, think about and consider having a standalone app for your loyalty. In the old days, um, a few years ago, uh, studying apps on phones, you know, people were overloaded with apps. They don't think that way anymore. Um, they get the updates, they'll click on it. If they want to find it, they can search. They know how to search it on their phone, so they're not overwhelmed by having a lot of apps on their phones. Um, surprisingly, and, and I think telling of how important mobile is, texting is also uh, ranked pretty high. It's number three overall, um, much higher than getting a status at the point of purchase or an online computer on your, on your computer, like just going to your laptop and getting your status. So um, that's how they prefer to track and receive loyalty. Next slide, please. Okay, and then they prefer to redeem loyalty rewards via app and email. So we're seeing similar, um, uh, similar type of engagement. The one caveat here is in the over 60 um, age group, they like to redeem their points at the cash register. Um, and so, you know, typically when you're at the cash register, you need it in an email or on your app regardless, but sometimes there's an automatic, and we know of some programs, in fact, the number two ranked program that we're going to reveal will kick it out for you right at the cash register. Um, and as you look in the 45 to 60 group, there's also a preference for cash register. So there is a convenience factor there. We would just say that shouldn't be your only way that you deliver. Um, and then as it looks at redeeming loyalty uh, rewards, uh, texting in the, is, is in the fourth place, and then online portal is again at the bottom. Next slide, please. Okay, um, I got a note here, and it says that uh, we've got a couple of uh, surveys to run. And so I think at this point, why don't we do, let's go ahead and ask one of the questions really quickly. Can we put that up on the screen? Okay, so um, we've got the question up. How many loyalty or reward programs are you enrolled in? Again, this information is completely private. We won't know how you answered. It's simply um, for the purposes of, um, information within this webinar. So if you can answer that question, uh, please do. And then we will move on through the rest of the presentation. We'll give it just a minute here.
We'll give another 30 seconds to answer and then we'll uh, pop up the results. All right. Okay, so there are the uh, results. It looks like 75% um, of you agree pretty much with the findings that we found that you belong to four or more loyalty programs, which is um, you know, very insightful. Um, this is great information. Again, this will be in the video, so you'll be able to see that. Um, and we will uh, ask you another question here in just a minute. But if we can go back to the presentation, please. All right, so here's a big, big, big impact um, as it relates to loyalty and retail. It's kind of obvious um, to even say it, but when you think about a loyalty program, uh, I think there's more aha to it than, than um, has even been in the past. So when we looked at holiday shopping, 69% of adults in the United States belong to Amazon Prime. That number is now at 75% and it's growing. So we did this in February. We assume because of COVID, the number is even higher. And when you think about Amazon and all the things that they offer to their customers and the way that they offer it to them, you know, this is a giant driver for how loyalty programs have to conduct themselves. They have to be mobile first. They have to provide a lot of options. They have to be super user friendly and they have to show a lot of value. Um, but yeah, wow, 75%. And when you think about three fourths of everyone in the United States belongs to a loyalty program, that's just a crazy number. Even aggregately, if you look at a specific category um, overall, like grocery stores where most people, you know, in quotes, belong to, um, 50%. Well over 50% of the people in the United States actually belong to a grocery program. So this is just just a crazy number for one single outlet to have that many members. Next slide, please. Okay, so we're going to look at loyalty with the right stuff. So this is a lot of you on this call. Um, and again, congratulations if you made this list. If you didn't make the list and you have a loyalty program, it doesn't mean that you have a bad program. It just means that you weren't on the list nationally when we ask um, each individual to name their very favorite program. So you could still have a great program. It just wasn't named the very best without any recall. OK, so let's move forward. All right, so I was talking about loyalty categories ranked by percent of participation. And as we get into this ranking, you'll see it across the board. But what's pretty amazing is you see over 40 categories here that are um, close to 40 that are in the double digits of participation. So, you know, in the old days you had loyalty and you had some retail and, you know, travel, some other things, but you're really starting to see loyalty spread across industries and become really important. Um, now, we put Amazon in here as its own category just because the number was so high, but you kind of see the top 10 there. Um, with Amazon being at the top in participation, and then grocery number two, credit cards number three, food and beverage um, number four, restaurants tied there at fourth. Then you have convenience stores, uh, which we're seeing a big surge in convenience stores and a lot of great things um, in the feedback from consumers on convenience stores. Um, airlines, uh, mass merchant department stores, hotels, Entertainment, events, sports, theaters, tickets um, is another big category. Gaming and gambling, car rental. You're going to see some shifts in these, um, you know, post COVID 19, but um, certainly um, you'll want to spend some time looking at these categories. Um, and we're really excited about having this information because we're going to track it over time um, and watch the categories that might go up or might go down. Um, but it's, it's really amazing to see. It speaks to people actually participating in multiple programs because the numbers are so high across so many different categories. Next slide, please. Okay, so as we start ranking, um, we're going to look at 161 brands. I won't read out all of their names, but we are going to share the rankings um, with you broken into you know uh, the, the initial macro list and then 
we'll look by industry and then we're going to look at um then we will look at uh just uh the ones that punched above their weight the smaller brands that did really well in the national study so if you look at the top 10 we will provide some comment here we'll have um, some verbatims on a lot of these later but um, we've talked about amazon kind of obvious they have the most members but their members are actually extraordinarily happy um, so that's kind of a hard task um, a big surprise one that we saw i wouldn't say surprise but um, that just got outstanding results um, was walgreens and um, you know we talk about a little bit later the value that it brings um, but along with walgreens um, cbs uh, also was was close um, you know when you look at the top 10 and you think about the top 10 they're they're close we had to rank them just by total mentions but being in the top 10 is an amazing feat and even being in i'd say being on the list or being in the top 50 even is is amazing but um, a lot of good feedback on walgreens which we'll share a little bit later um, starbucks is one that you would expect up here on the list they're always um, doing great things in loyalty kroger standing out um, in the grocery category, but also doing some things, kind of leading in some different ways in loyalty, particularly when you think about those smart offers. Um, that's a huge driver for Kroger, as is gasoline. Um, yeah, people save on their groceries and they get some points and rewards, but one of the things they love most about Kroger are those um, special values that are on things that they actually buy. Um, Southwest Airlines uh, ranked very high, and you know we'll provide a little bit more detail but very simplistic compared to a typical program and, and those were some of the benefits um, to that also if you think about southwest it's more used every day versus um, a business a business traveler it's more used for everyday type travel so um, kind of a, a little bit different um, audience but um, just uh, an outstanding program i talked a little bit about cbs um, very close to walgreens um, that whole category, just people see significant value in the pharmacy chain um, category um, in their personal lives. They see real savings all the time, so it's important to them. One of the nice things that people noticed about CBS, um, like Kroger, were um, getting those special offers and coupons for the things that they actually purchased. Um, Kohl's was um, highly mentioned and, and loved in the um, retail sector. Um, you know, people said things like, they understand me, they get me. As soon as I go there, I'm rewarded the moment that I make a purchase because they give me something else. Um, usually, you know, I drive back in store in a few days, but um, uh, just great experiences. Chick-fil-A um, is a brand that um, hasn't always had a loyalty program. They've certainly had the most loyal customers. If you've ever seen their drive-throughs um, in the markets that they're in, um, they circle the building. Um, because they just get so many things right with their customers, but now they have a loyalty program and it's it's you know getting lots of mentions. Um, Ibotta, so in the shopping app space, um, Ibotta um, ranked very high, lots of accolades. One of the things that people mention about Ibotta, there's some other folks in here too, like uh, Fetch Rewards, and um, there's quite a few others. Um, they like the ability to spend across categories and it simplifies loyalty programs. Now you're seeing consumers belong to a lot of loyalty programs, and this is one of the ways for them to streamline. Maybe they pick up you know, the retailers that they typically wouldn't enter their loyalty programs. They feel like they're in it because of the Ibotas. Um, and then Ulta, um, very loyal customers. They like special experiences, um, special offers, exclusives to loyalty members. Um, so they feel really special in Ulta. It's not just about savings, but it's it's feeling special. We'll click through a few more here. Next slide. Um, so, you know, as we go into uh, the ranking of the top 20, there's really 26 here because there's a lot of ties. Um, but uh, Marriott Bonvoy um, led the hotel industry. Certainly they have a little bit bigger, uh, they have the bigger footprint, but um, What's interesting about their program is um, Hilton was very close, but in both of those, the rewards that they provide, um, even some folks said they're harder to, to earn, but they love the rewards. They're just passionate about the product. Um, and that's mainly because you know people will travel for business or other things, and then they get to use those rewards um, for 
personal leisure time in great places. There was a mention I, um, on Hilton, and I believe maybe on Marriott, we'll see them verbatims, but um, just the savings that people get from international travel by using those rewards are huge. Um, Discover Card, so coming in simple, easy to understand, straightforward program. People really like that. Um, Speedway in the convenience space, you've got Target. So um, Target coming in a retail, um, we'll share some of the verbatims there. And then I'll kind of just uh, go faster through the list now, but we've got American Airlines and Costco, Giant Eagle, which is a regional grocery chain in the Northeast, um, ranked really high, um, you know, number two in grocery. Um, and, you know, a big driver for Giant Eagle has always been their gas rewards. They were one of the first to do that, but they just have a super loyal base and they've got a, a very smart type program. Um, and they were tied with Safeway. Um, Safeway's in that same area. From a credit card perspective, American Express is also uh, ranked um, high. Uh, Chase overall, so both they they tie their credit card and their banking together. So there's more opportunities to earn are are really high. Um, GameStop tied in here at number 20, and GameStop um, was really interesting. You'll you'll like the verbatims in here. Um, their customers are so passionate and they care so much about their products and the people that work there are so passionate that that's part of their loyalty program. And special experiences is huge for GameStop above and beyond the savings and the smart coupons and things. Um, it's, it's something that their customers really look for. IHG ranked high. Um, uh, and then we've got Meyer, another super regional uh, superstore. Murphy USA, division of Walmart. Um, gas stations, really nice, uh, ranked really high, nice program, as did Sam's. Next slide, please. Um, in this category, um, these all of these um, 27 through 35 tied at number 27. Um, again, super complimentary uh, customers in, in across the board as we go through these categories. But in this space, we had 7-Eleven, uh, Bank of America, Best Buy, Capital One, Delta, Dunkin' Donuts, Sephora, United, Winn-Dixie. Um, you know, the consumers citing these as their favorite program are saying things like, this is just, uh, in the case of 7-Eleven, every time I go there to get gas, I'm getting a value. And even if I don't use it, it's something that, you know, makes me feel good as I'm pumping my gas or after I've just left. Um, and so they see real value across the board. Capital One, um, some excellent mentions, and really all, all of these brands. Next slide, please. If you look at the ones that tied at number 36, you've got AT&T, Alaska Airlines, Chili's, Dick's Sporting, Dick Sporting Goods, Fetch Rewards. A lot of great things said about Fetch Rewards. It was kind of like that Ibotta where they said, um, I can spend at a lot of stores, and I like that. Um, ironically, Fetch Rewards is big in um, the grocery channel, and um, so you saw a lot of people already belong to, to grocery, but people feel like with Fetch, they're getting even more value. So great job there from Fetch Rewards. Um, Harris Teeter, uh, Microsoft. So we saw a lot of mentions on Microsoft across their platforms. Um, you know, you think about Microsoft kind of being a B2B player, they have a lot of consumer products um, and they tie their loyalty across the span and um, really seeing some traction there. In fact, as it relates to electronics, they were, you know, ranked one of the very highest. Um, and then we've got in this 36, we also have some in the restaurant space, uh, like Moe's Southwest and Papa John's. We've got PetSmart, Rakuten, uh, Sheets, um, which is a super regional um, convenience store, very, very loyal customers. Weiss Grocery, Whataburger in Texas. Um, anybody that lives in Texas and a few other places, um, uh, it has always been, it's another one of those brands where they've been super loyal to the brand already without any kind of loyalty program. But now with this loyalty program, it's really um, made a difference um, for the chain. Next slide, please. And when I say makes a difference, I haven't spoken to anybody at Whataburger, so I'm not providing validation for that. I'm just saying that their customers are saying there's a difference and that they like the new loyalty program. Um, as it relates to um, those that tied at number 50, we've got Crunchyroll, we've got Domino's, Family Fair, Hawaiian Airlines, hy V, Jimmy John's, King Super, Come and Go, Macy's, uh, MySupplementStore.com, Panera Bread, Petco, Pizza Hut, 
Ralph's, Red Robin, Rite Aid, ShopRite, Victoria's Secret, Wyndham. And so we'll click through these a little bit faster now and I'll take you to the industry rankings. That's where it gets really interesting. There's a lot um, in here um, across the board. When you get into 69, there's a lot tied at 69. There's a lot of super regionals, which is why there um, you know, might, might be uh, more in this tight area. You do see some nationals like JCPenney, um, Dollar General, um, but for the most part, there's a lot of super regional here. Next slide, please. More brands, you'll see a lot of consumer products. One of the one of the things about consumer products, people love the programs. They don't offer typically um, as much or as rich of rewards as um, larger, like say an electronics or an airline or something like that. But people participate because they see the value and they like all the added value from it. Um, so you start to see a lot of consumer brands in this ranking as well. Next slide. Okay, so we're gonna talk about our heavy hitters really quickly. These are folks that punch above their weight and then we'll go into uh, category segments. We'll do this quickly, but some of the heavy hitters, Giant Eagle, you saw them pop out number 16, even though they're regional and Meyer. Uh, Alaska Airlines did really well, sort of a smaller Southwest Airlines, similar type program, really well. Harris Teeters, Mo Southwest is really, you know, a, a regional restaurant chain, heavily in the Southeast. Um, and uh, then you've got, Sheets and Weiss and we mentioned Waterburger. Those are all tied for number three. Some other heavy hitters, really quickly. You see those there. Congratulations to all of them for doing well. Punching above their weight in less than 50 states. Next slide, please. And then these are all tied at number five. Um, a lot of restaurants, regional um, type programs and when you see like a Dillon's, uh, Dillon's is actually a division of Kroger but there's a small section of the country where Dillon's is still um, in play not as Kroger um, but you'll see like um, BJ Wholesale Club it's it's similar to Costco and Sam's but on a much smaller footprint ranks really high. Wawa way over to the right a lot of people know Wawa and uh, Tom Thumb Grocery. Um, so anyway those are the heavy hitters now we're going to look at industry rankings Uh, as we look at the industry rankings, we're going to just go through the categories quickly um, and we'll get to some verbatims and uh, share just a couple other things with you and then wrap up. So in the uh, arts and crafts space, there was one um, nominated as a best program, uh, one company. It doesn't mean they got one vote, but one company, Michaels, was the only one mentioned. Again, we didn't create the categories. We didn't ask people. We just said, what is your favorite? What is the best loyalty program that you belong to? In airlines, you've got Southwest at the top, American number two, Delta and United number three, Alaska number four, Hawaiian, and then uh, JetBlue and KLM at number six. In the automotive space, um, AutoZone was number one, Pep Boys number two. In cable and satellite, AT&T was number one, Straight Talk and Verizon were tied at number two. In the car rental and ride share, Hertz was at number one. You've got Uber um, right behind it. And then um, you've got club stores like Costco, uh, number one, Sam's Club, and then BJ's. From convenience stores, really tight race. You've got Speedway, Murphy, 7-Eleven, Sheets, Come and Go, BP. What we really noticed about that space is the whole category has really stepped up. There's a lot of new programs and people love them. Um, you know, even like um, those in the number six area uh, got a, a lot of compliments. Um, so again, just a great job in that space. Next category. Uh, so as we look at cosmetic, health, beauty, fitness, that's kind of a hard category to pull it all together because you could say Walgreens and CVS fit there, but we put them over in their own category. But Ulta at the top, and then Sephora, MySupplementStore.com, Ah uh, Yes, and Vitamin Store and some others, they're at number four. Um, uh, you'll notice over on credit cards, Discover Card um, at the top, American Express number two, Chase, Bank of America, again, and Capital One, this doesn't mean that um, Discover Card has the has a better program than American Express. Um, typically, they're they're talking to different customers anyway. It just means that they're when we did a national poll of the entire population, there were more people that mentioned Discover Card as being the best. Same for Capital One; their customers are extraordinarily passionate. Um, and even SunTrust, a super regional, got a lot of nice um, compliments there. 
As it relates to cruise, you've got Carnival and Royal Caribbean in um, drugstore, Walgreens and CVS, almost in a virtual tie, very close. Um, very strong programs from both, um, super complimentary. You've got Rite Aid. Um, as we look over in the e-cigs and vape and cigarettes, Define Premium Cannabis showed up. Um, they've got some um, exceptionally loyal customers, more so and more mentions than uh, Marlboro. Um, and then you've got Electronics and Appliance, Best Buy uh, is doing a uh, really good job, but uh, Microsoft had a lot of mentions as well. Next slide, please. When we look at entertainment, GameStop, we talked a little bit about GameStop, but those customers are um, way up there. Um, interesting, it's going to be really interesting to see how the movie industry shakes out. But um, there was one movie chain that um, came in the ranking, and that was Cinemark Theaters. Um, and their fans really liked their product. Fandango certainly kind of is that override product um, for the movie industry. So it's going to be interesting, um, you know, how uh, post-COVID, how that industry shakes out. But certainly Cinemark has a very loyal following as then does Fandango. In the fashion space, Victoria's Secret was at the top. You kind of see the other listings there. And food and beverage, you really had a tie. So it was Coke, Pepsi, GH Foods, which is more B2B, um, but they have a loyalty program. They got some mentions and then Kellogg's. Um, in the grocery space, um, we've talked a lot about that space, but you see a lot of big players. Certainly that was at one time the number one loyalty category. Um, and uh, so those companies have legacy programs that have been around for a very long time and they're very smart and they understand their customers and um, communicate to them in a lot of different ways. But I think the big ones are there like gas, convenience, um, easy to, easier to use coupons, smarter coupons. Next slide, please. Um, when we look at home, Bath and Body Works is at the top. Uh, close second was... Um, Bed Bath & Beyond, or these were all actually tied, I apologize. So th there was uh, even West Elm um, really close there. Hotels, you see more of a ranking, uh, Marriott, Hilton, IHG, Wyndham, insurance. Um, surprisingly, not a lot of insurance showed up um, in the ranking, but State Farm was number one, United tied with United Healthcare, um, and they don't really compete. Now you got mass merchant, um, including Amazon, so we included them here, but you know, you take the Amazon factor out and then you've got Coles on top, Target, Macy's, and JCPenney. And, um, and what's kind of surprising about that, when you look at that, there's other major, major players in that space that aren't getting any mentions, um, but they don't, you know, they're not necessarily putting out loyalty programs. Um, then you have the PAT and Agri Supply um, category, uh, really close, but uh, PetSmart is number one, Petco, and then Chewy online, um, number three. Restaurants, see the ranking there, there's a lot of restaurants. Next slide, please. Um, when you look at research panels, so you've just kind of got a tie there. Uh, National Consumer Panel, E-Rewards, SurveyMonkey, Swagbucks were all mentioned as great loyalty programs. In shoes, uh, a little surprising. So GH Bass ranked at the top and then uh, Nike was number two, no other shoes. And if you think about how big shoe category is and how important and how loyal customers are in the shoe categories. There just aren't a lot of uh, loyalty programs in that space. So it's uh, kind of interesting when you see that on a page. Then when you look at shopping apps, uh, we talked about Ibotta and Fetch, um, Rakuten, uh, Checkout 51, and then you see some kind of um, discounters uh, tied at number four. You'll see Honey App and some other things, um, Shopkick. Um, all really good, um, providing a lot of value there and becoming more popular. Over in the sporting goods, you've got Dick's at the top. You've got Cabela's, which is now part of Bass Pro number two, tied with REI. And then in travel sites, only one travel site mentioned, which is surprising. Um, and we could have lumped this over into with the hotels, but we thought we would separate it out um, because it is a little bit different experience. But Expedia, um, a lot of loyal fans there. Next slide, please. Okay, um, we were going to ask one other question. I think to expedite, because we're running a little bit behind here, we will skip that um, second question and um, we will uh, go into, do we want to do, uh, we'll do a few comments here, a few verbatims, I'll shorten those, and then we'll do a handoff to Tracy. All right, so next slide, please. Um, you'll find these in the reports. These are cumulative verbatims that we pulled where consumers actually told us what they thought about programs. When you look in here, like Amazon, I get a lot more of what I pay for. There's free streaming. I use Amex points. They always resolve to my satisfaction, was mentioned multiple times. Preferred fast delivery. 
they're doing a lot of things right. Walgreens, really simple, easy, has real cumulative value. Um, I, I get discounts on my purchases at any time and every time there's savings at checkout. Starbucks, good reward system, but also exclusive member only events. Next slide, please. Kroger, personalized coupons, that was mentioned more than anything else. And then fuel rewards was really close. And, and if you know the Kroger business, typically you're thinking it's driven by fuel rewards, but those personalized coupons are a big one. Free Friday, instant savings. There's other chains that do the Free Friday um, that didn't show up in the poll. Um, I know one in the Southeast, a large chain that has Free Fridays and a lot of things, but they just launched their loyalty program. So they're not even on the list here. Um, when we look at uh, Southwest Airlines, great rewards, convenience, best value, best perks, can use it with my credit card, CBS, high value, relevant rewards, um, beauty rewards, beauty exclusive rewards, you get cash back and free samples, CBS cares, they give great discounts, lots of coupons and massive savings. Next slide. So you'll see in here, you know, some of the others, and when you download the report, you'll be able to get these, I kind of cited a lot of them. Um, you see Kohl's and Chick-fil-A and Ibotta and Ulta. Next slide, please. Marriott, Hilton, Discover Card, Speedway. What was nice about Speedway, um, this came up with some of the others. They've got daily deals. They've got free items at the point of purchase on all purchases. You get a lot of variety of items. They're engaging and rewarding. Generous points for food. Next slide. Target saves money right away, helps the world. So you don't see, didn't see a lot of that in most of these programs. And then it communicates about upcoming sales in advance. Um, American Airlines, Costco. One of the things Costco does, and you know, you're starting to see this trend, they're giving cash back. So when it's time to renew, when you pay, they're giving you, you know, your cash back for being a good customer. So if you're spending, your renewal is can be free. Um, next slide, please. And here you got Safeway, American Express. American Express was one of those brands where they talked about experience and customer service was really important. Um, Chase was about being everywhere. GameStop, um, they get $5 per month in points, 10% savings on previously owned stuff. Special events was huge for GameStop. Next slide, please. IHG, you got Meyer. Meyer was talking about personalized coupons. Murphy is like always free products. They also earn free gas. Um, Sam's Club, a little bit similar to Costco savings. I get cash back on. Next slide. 7-Eleven, Alaska Airlines, Fetch Rewards. I earn rewards from multiple companies, so I don't have to shop in just one place. From places I'm already getting rewards from, so it's doubly uh, valuable. Um, Rakuten, to get store variety, amount of rewards, multiple ways to get money. Next slide. Sheets, Weiss Grocery, Whataburger, they've got prize thresholds are low and attainable. Um, you hear that a lot in the C-stores. They've got the app and it rewards me with free food when I come back. Um, and you can order in advance. That was a big one for Whataburger and we saw that in some of the other restaurants. Um, Crunchyroll, they like that it supports artists. Next slide. Hawaiian Airlines, High V, King Super, Come and Go, Ride Aid, one of verbatims. Next. Okay, so with that, um, we really appreciate your time here. Um, Tracy's going to walk you through uh, very quickly a couple of our products, and then at the end, I'll come back and I'll share a webinar, a really important webinar that we have coming up, and um, we'll answer any questions that you have. So Tracy, if you want to take it. Yes, thank you, Rod. Um, so I'll be quick here, but what I want you to know, um, when we build products at DaVinci, we spend a lot of time thinking about your customers. They drive your business and so they drive ours. So when we think about your customers, we keep in mind the insights that um, Rod just took us through. Customers expect a lot from loyalty today. Participation in loyalty programs is at an all time high. They want to engage with your loyalty programs easily, and they want that to be on their mobile devices. Um, they also want a cash equivalent prepaid card over a discount. So DaVinci can help you deliver on a successful loyalty program in an obvious way. We're a payments provider specializing in real-time payments, including prepaid cards. 
So we can easily facilitate delivery of physical or virtual prepaid good anywhere, or for customers to use specifically for repeat purchases with your brand. But I also wanna show you two other tools in our tool belt that can really help you drive loyalty. So first, Brand Accelerator. At DaVinci, we think of a payment as an extension of your brand. So when we fulfill on a payment on your behalf, let's say it's a rebate, that's, that payment is a touch point. Sometimes it's your very last touch point with a customer. And so with Brand Accelerator, we've turned the payment into a tool that can drive engagement and increase loyalty. Brand Accelerator is a content overlay that sits on our payment platform, which is fully branded on your behalf. Then when your recipients are paid, they claim or register their payment and they interact with your marketing content and messaging. So Brand Accelerator, we've seen it used to promote referral programs, cross-sell services, promote charitable partners, increase downloads of loyalty apps, and drive loyalty program registration. Now, of course, there are plenty of other ways to enroll your customers into a loyalty program, but few of those other channels are more powerful than the moment when somebody's just been paid. Next slide, please. Okay, I also wanna show you really quickly DaVinci's Payment Accelerator, which is an industry first, fresh approach to acquisition and loyalty marketing solutions. So brands use it to send promotional funds directly to customers' mobile phones in the form of a virtual prepaid card, along with the call to action for the next loyal behavior. Now we know virtual prepaid cards are the reward of choice, as Rod shared with us, and simplified mobile delivery is a big part of what customers expect from loyalty programs today. So let's talk about some of the specific benefits of payment accelerator. First, for the customer, We've done our own research on this topic, but it's no mystery. We all know the value of a mobile experience. Customers have told us they want funds on their phone. So when an offer is delivered via payment accelerator, they never lose the promotion like they might with mailers or even emails. And redeeming loyalty offers becomes very easy for them. Even more importantly, with funds on their phone, they feel the excitement and the urgency of cash burning a hole in their pocket. And they're gonna respond differently to that cash invitation. So for brands, you'll see a higher take rate and more customer engagement in your loyalty program because that payment is now included upfront with your call to action. And for any marketers on the phone, you should know that with Payment Accelerator, you can clearly measure ROI, respond to it, and launch new and refined promotions quickly. You can skip POS programming and get promotions to market faster, avoiding the distribution challenges and expenses that come with other distribution channels. So Payment Accelerator really lets you get creative with loyalty and run fully customized campaigns by location, by region, or nationwide, even across franchises or fragmented POS systems. Now we're using Payment Accelerator to drive that incremental loyal behavior and enable direct attribution to sales and while we focus really heavily on consumer loyalty in this whole discussion, Payment Accelerator can also drive loyalty for channel members, for contractors, distributors, employees, et cetera. So whoever is in your audience, uh, this is a valuable tool for you to add to your loyalty strategy. If you wanna experiment with a pilot and see what loyalty payments can do for you, then get in touch with us after this webinar. And with that, Raj, shall we field some questions here? Yeah, so uh, we've got a few questions here that we'll jump into. Um, if we can click to the next slide, I wanna also tell everybody just uh, before we go into those questions about our next webinar. Um, we've got a webinar coming up in June. It's June 23rd, and you can find it on our website um, or go to davincipayments.com where payments go. So we're doing a study in the United States, Canada, and the United Kingdom on um, consumer or payee preferences and how they're getting paid right now, mid COVID-19, and a lot of different ways how they're getting paid and then how they think they wanna be paid in the future. So I think it's gonna be a really telling um, snapshot of where the market is at this exact moment and kind of how they're seeing the future. So we're, we're very excited about that. Um, and we have some experts that'll be joining us um, who've worked both in North America and Europe um, to share a lot of that content. 
Um, so please do uh, join us there. So we'll um, answer a few of your questions. We're running late, so we apologize for that. Uh, I think I got a little too excited about the loyalty, but we'll uh, we'll uh, go into some of the questions. So um, Tracy, you just presented, and the customer asked on the brand accelerator that you shared um, that does the sign up the loyalty programs, who owns the data? Oh, that is a great question. Um, so the data is fully owned by the brand, right? So think of um, DaVinci's payment products are just another tool in your arsenal, um, but the strategy and the data all owned by the brand. Okay, um, our next question says, which do you supply most for loyalty programs, physical or virtual prepaid cards? Um, and I can answer that, or Tracy, you can. It's up to you. I'll go for it, Rod. Okay, so um, we're seeing a surge in virtual prepaid. Um, part of that is because all the numbers you've seen here on mobile, and it's been growing uh, at double-digit rates. More recently with COVID-19, it's going through the roof. But across the board in our loyalty programs, our customers have been choosing um, to give their customers choice in the reward, so they can choose a physical or virtual card, and that's where the majority of um, our customers, um, that's the majority of what they ask for. Um, some just want exclusively virtual at this point, um, but either choice or virtual um, is now um, easily the front runner. Um, next question was uh, back to Brand Accelerator and the Payment Accelerator. Um, are they easy to set up? Are they white label? And can we integrate them with an existing loyalty program? Yep, yep, great questions. Uh, can be integrated with an existing loyalty program and setup is easy. So on Brand Accelerator, if you're already running a payment program with us, um, setup is as quick as um, us receiving your assets. We'll configure the assets, you can review and push it live. Uh, payment Accelerator, we're setting up a virtual card program and just need your assets and it can be a launch that is as quick as one to two weeks. Fantastic. Okay. And then we'll just do one last question. Um, it was getting into the science of the study. It says, um, can you share your methodology for the ranking? Um, and I know some people came in late, so I did share up front. But as it relates to the rankings, um, as we said, first and foremost, congratulations to anybody that made this list because we we spoke to over a thousand consumers and we just asked them very simply, what is your favorite loyalty program that you participate in and why? With no uh, suggestions whatsoever in any category um, and they just told us and they named their favorite programs and they named them multiple times in fact there were 161 brands that they named out of a thousand people um, so that was the methodology and uh, we took all those we tabulated them we read every single one of them um, so we understood them and then um, we ranked them by how many mentions they received and then we broke them out also by industries and by regional category. If you'd like to know more on that, you can um, shoot me an email. Um, but uh, what I would invite everybody to do is to, vi to visit um, DaVinciPayments.com insights and there you can find um, this study and other studies um, and uh, make sure you come out to our next webinar which is um, where payments are going next. So we really appreciate your time here. Thank you so much for joining us. And um, please stay in touch. If you need anything, um, just go to davinci.com and hit contact and we'll be happy to get back to you.